Hey everybody, so if you don't want to hear about the story, if you're going to reflexively downvote it, by all means, X out of this video, do something else with your life. Nobody's forcing you legally to watch this. This is the sto a story that I have followed and written about, and if there's a significant development, I'm going to discuss it, in part because I think that there are some broader implications here to be mindful of in terms of the way that political discourse is constructed. So, with that preface being said, if you're just going to get angry and lash out at the very fact that I'm even discussing this, then please, do you yourself a favor, do me a favor, and get the frick out of here. Um... I'm going to do my best to ignore the comments in the stream, which I've not figured out a way how to disable on my phone. Okay, so the last couple of days have been almost definitively devastating for anybody who has a shred of belief in the supposed credibility of Tara Reid as somebody making an allegation against not just Joe Biden, but anybody. Um... And that really came to a culmination today when she was dumped. She was dropped as a client by Douglas Wigdor, who was a lawyer who had taken her on for about two weeks pro bono to handle PR stuff, to handle some of, I guess, the legal stuff associated with being a high-profile accuser. And out of nowhere, Douglas Wigdor says today that he's getting rid of Tara Reid. Now, why do I have a particular interest in Douglas Wigdor? Because I had to, in the course of my writing an article on this that was published a week ago today, deal with Douglas Wigdor as Tara Reid's representation. And what did he do? He accused me personally of engaging in character assassination character assassination and smears for having the audacity to do basic journalistic inquiry into this allegation, which had gotten a huge amount of steam, was being propelled, or had already been at that point, propelled into national political consciousness due to the actions initially of unscrupulous online media personalities who didn't think that it was necessary to vet a claim like this. And I don't want to hear about Christine Blasey Ford, okay? That's a separate issue. I wrote about that at the time. I have my own take on that at the time. I never ran around shouting, believe women, so I don't want to see one single solitary comment about this, about that in reference to me, because that doesn't apply to me. I'm giving you an independent perspective on this issue, okay? Um, so Douglas Wigdor accused me of engaging in character assassination and smears. Of course, he didn't address a spe single specific detail in the article itself. He just cast it all as smears and character assassination, which I guess you would expect him to do as somebody representing a client who is now revealed unambiguously without a shadow of a doubt any longer as being a f serial fabulist. And not just a serial fabulist about random things in life. Everybody lies about stuff, I guess, but chronically over and over again about issues that have direct relevance or direct bearing on the allegation at hand. So now it comes out that, for example, Tara Reid, who then went under a different alias, she's had many aliases um, and different explanations for why she's changed aliases so many times. Um, but it came out that, you know, one thing that definitely caught my attention when I was researching and reporting that story is that Tara Reid has been cited over, over the years as an expert witness who actually testified in court in Monterey County, California, as a, a, an expert witness on the issue of domestic violence. And part of what she would do is go and testify as to why a victim 
might change their story about what allegedly happened to them vis-a-vis -vis domestic violence or abuse, and yet still should be regarded as credible. So the prosecution put her forward as an expert witness in cases of that nature. And now what's happened? It's, it came out that she falsified her educational credentials, number one. She claimed she had an undergraduate degree from Antioch University, which is a small college in Seattle. And the university denies that she ever obtained a degree. I don't know why they would lie about that, but they've denied it to now multiple outlets, including the New York Times and others. So unless you're going to say that Antioch University is part of a big establishment DNC conspiracy, it's fairly likely that she did not receive a degree from that institution. They would have no reason to lie about that. So as a alleged expert witness, you have to put forward your educational credentials to the court. And that we now know is falsified. She also submitted a resume that was shared by the district attorney that was using her as an expert witness to the defense counsel for these various people, some of whom were convicted for life, partly on the basis of testimony that is now going to be challenged and probably in some cases overturned as a result of her malfeasance. Okay? In the, testimony, in the resume that she provided to the court, she said that she worked, like she's lying here about her experience in Biden's office. Not just about random facets of her life, about her, her tenure in Biden's office, which she continued to cite as recently as 2018, 2019 as a credential that gave her authority to wield her experience as a in the context of these criminal trials. She said that she worked in Biden's office from 1991 to 1994. Wrong. She worked in Biden's office from December 2, 1992 to August 6, 1993. Now, why would she lie about that? Well, I guess one reason to lie about that is because you want to inflate your credentials so that you are utilized as an expert witness in... Trials like this where you're compensated with a stipend, given a hotel room, and that kind of thing. But whatever her reason for lying about this, she lied about it. And now that's going to be used as a basis for challenges of the convictions of the clients of defense lawyers who are now going to say, look, this the prosecution put forward a supposed expert witness who falsified her credentials. So if her testimony contributed to the jury deciding to convict my client, no. This trial is tainted. It's got to be overturned. And I would think that many of the... This is going to create a scandal, you know, like a mini scandal, so to say, in Monterey County, California, where she was used as an expert witness on multiple occasions. So that's what happens when you're credulously just parroting the claims of somebody who is clearly a serial liar. And that's not me saying it, saying it. That's her, according to what she has put out there. So, Douglas Wigdor jumps ship. He claims that he still believes Tara Reid. And she's like, okay, Douglas if you still believe her, why are you no longer representing her? What was the reason that all of a sudden you decided to cease your representation of this person? Explain that, please. Well, he hasn't explained it. Nor will he, I'm sure. Because, uh, you know, he wants to put forward an image of being like a sterling defender of victims. And, you know, Douglas Wigder... He's obviously, I mean, he appropriates the rhetoric of believing survivors because he knows that has cachet or like carries influence with certain subsets of like mostly liberal, elite liberal uh, opinion. 
And so then he, as somebody who appears to be a conservative, which is, you know, not a crime, but he's somebody who, like, knows how to push buttons, much to his financial success as a lawyer. Um... And, you know, there's so much new information that's come out which, like, just obliterates every last ounce of her, her credibility here. Um, and again, this is not poverty shaming. This is not saying that just because somebody who has struggled financially over the course of their life, they can't have been subjected to assault, they can't be telling the truth. No. I think it's actually an insult, frankly, to say that everybody who has endured financial duress or distressed over the course of their lives is that is necessarily a serial manipulator and liar i mean i think that's actually more insulting of a presumption if you really think about it um you know but you i mean here, here's here's a good one and I, I, I kind of referenced this partially in the uh, in this piece that I I did. But in 2016, she was raising money for herself because she claimed that her ex-husband, Theodore Dronin, who she at t she accused of actually being a socio somebody someone who's a violent sociopath. who, you know, assaulted babies, killed animals, and, uh, you know, was just brutally violent toward her. She said that he had all of a sudden come back in 2016 after, after 15 years, and she was fearful for her safety. And it turns out that what caused Harry to put up a GoFundMe that raised thousands of dollars in the wake of Dronin, Ted Dronin coming back was that Dronin sent her and her daughter, quote, friend request via Facebook. Okay, so that's, that's those are the kinds of schemes that this person pulled. And I get a lot of comments and queries as to why I'm covering the story, interested in the story. Well, I mean, wh why wasn't that query made of the people who relentlessly promoted it for weeks and now that it's fallen apart, they're pretending like it didn't happen or they're at least ignoring it for the time being. Why wasn't that question put to them? It didn't seem like anybody had any confusion or question as to why they were devoting a huge amount of attention to this story back when it, you know, it was like the popular thing to do where you got you a lot of social media plaudits. I know that talking about this is not going to get me plaudits. I know that people are probably going to unsubscribe. That's happened already. Unfollow me. You know what? I don't care. If I did care about that kind of thing, it would be corrupting. It would corrode my ability to independently analyze stuff like this. So I have, I've already put up a shield where I don't allow those kinds of incentives to impinge upon me and dictate the manner in which I report on things, analyze things, or what I choose to train my attention on. And if you want somebody who does that, who's just like a stooge of their so-called audiences, then go find somebody else to watch. That's fine. Go find somebody who just flatters your preconceptions, affirms your biases. That's wonderful. I mean, that's what most people want in life. And I don't blame you. It's easier. But that's just not my inclinations, and I'm not going to do it. And I'm not supporting Joe Biden. I don't care if you vote for Joe Biden or not. I could repeat that 10 billion times and it won't be enough. I remember when I had to repeat that 10 billion times in 2016 regarding Trump and people just didn't accept it. Well, you know what? Too bad. If you can't get it through your thick skull, then again, go play a video game. Go stand on your head. Go do some other thing. I don't care anymore. Um, yeah, so, you know, this is really a truly shameful episode for progressive quote unquote media online who were central in bringing this 
now almost certainly false allegation to the, the forefront. Uh, you know, it's a, you know, with 99, I'm going to say with 99% certainty, a confabulation. And I'm comfortable in saying that at this point, because she's a serial fabulist, she's a scammer, she's a con artist. That's just who she is. And if you got conned because you didn't want to do journalistic due diligence because you wanted to, quote, believe something as if you're worshiping in church, then, you know, you probably should reevaluate what you're saying. And I don't want to hear about, oh, the double standard hypocrisy stuff. Okay, fine. But at a certain point, whether the claim is true is actually a morally salient factor. And if you just disregarded that, then that says something not so positive about your own priorities. And I don't like how this stuff gets weaponized because in the short term, you know, before the, all the information comes out, it can do real reputational damage. Now, Tara Reid did herself reputational damage. I don't know what his, her issue is. I'm sure there are plenty of psychological theories to proffer uh, as to what is actually guiding her behavior here because it ain't pretty. Um, but you know, I'm sure that'll be dug into probably at some point, but the, 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 the pure people that you should, I think, be angry with are those who, um, you know, gained stature or gained, uh, tr your trust within the, in the online progressive media world and just decided to jettison all critical faculties with regard to the story. But story, I mean, it's really strange. I think a lot of them really thought it was going to be a Hail Mary last ditch ploy to sink Biden and get Bernie the nomination, which of course is ridiculous. Bernie himself repudiated this story more or less, um, which, you know, good for him, uh, but bad, not good for the kind of crazy diehard supporters who just said, oh my God, believe Kara. Just like, no, you idiot. I'm not believing anybody reflexively. I didn't believe Christine Blasey Ford reflexively. I don't believe anyone reflexively. We're not operating in the realm of belief here. Again, if that's the realm in which you're operate, operating, stick to your local church parish, go to your mosque, go to your temple, go to your whatever, and stay there. I didn't hear what the convo couch said about me today. Uh, they never asked me about that, so, uh, responding to a commenter. I didn't see it. I, I, have that. I can't respond to something I didn't see or hear. Um, so yeah, this is a joke, uh, a truly repulsive, shameful episode should cause you to doubt a lot of the people in progressive media who pushed it, sorry to say, some of whom I, I like in most other circumstances, but I mean, this is just ridiculous. This is unacceptable. It's unacceptable to allow a serial fabulist to con you. And yeah, somebody asked me if my coronavirus fear mongering, I regret, uh, hey, idiot, let me look up the latest uh, death toll. I see 97,647 deaths in the United States from coronavirus in, a, in less than three months. If I had told you on, what is it, what's today, May 22nd? If I had told you on, you know, March 1st, that by May 22nd we'd have almost 100,000 deaths confirmed. I'm sure there are many, many more that haven't been counted. I personally know one in my family who I think probably died from coronavirus in early March, but it wasn't tested. We don't know for sure. Um, but if, I think if, if somebody said, oh, yeah, 100,000 deaths in three months, you would have said, whoa, geez, that's a lot of deaths. That sounds really bad. And that happened even with unprecedented lockdown measures. So, no, I'm not, I, I, don't, I wouldn't fear monger anything. Are you accusing Donald Trump of fear mongering, you moron? Donald Trump is the one who declared a national emergency. Donald Trump is the one who encouraged Republican governors to lock down their states. Donald Trump is the one who invoked the Defense Production Act. Donald Trump is the one who just had a photo of him wearing a mask out today because he's in his 70s and he's overweight. So it makes sense that he would because he's probably at risk for coronavirus. So no, I didn't fear monger anything, you piece of garbage. And yeah, I'm angry. I don't know why. <laughs> I should probably lighten up. And with that, I'm going to close the chat. All right. Have a good day, everybody. Bye-bye.